Good morning. Good morning. This morning we're going to look at Jesus' trek from uh, where he currently is in Mark, which I don't remember where he is. Uh, but he's the he go, they're going yeah they're going to Jerusalem from Jericho in this section, and so he's going to encounter um, this man along the road, and then he's going to encounter a crowd greeting him as he's entering Jerusalem. And we're going to take a look at uh, some of the things they say, and also the interaction that he has with them. Uh, but before we do that, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, dear God. We thank you so much for this day uh, that you give us. Uh, Lord, we thank you uh, for your mercies that you continually shed upon us, uh, even though we don't deserve it. Uh, God, uh, we thank you for your word that we can see uh, who you are through your scriptures and uh, grow closer to you uh, through what you, you have told us. Uh, Lord, we thank you for sending your son and for his ministry on this earth and then leading him to the cross to die for our sins. Uh, Lord, uh, you know, we just thank you that we can share what the Bible has to say uh, to those who are listening uh, through Facebook. We pray in your name. Amen. Sorry? I don't think we said the exact verses. No, you didn't. So we're going to be doing Mark 10, 46 through 11, 11. Um, so I'm starting verse 46. They, um, that's Jesus and the disciples, uh, came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large, um, with his disciples and a large crowd, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the road. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many warned him to keep quiet, but he was crying out all the more, have mercy on me, son of David. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man and said to him, Have courage, get up, he's calling for you. He threw off his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. When Jesus answered him, uh, then Jesus answered him, What do you want me to do for you? Rabboni, the blind man said to him, I want to see you. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has saved you. Immediately he could, he could see and began to follow Jesus on the road. When they approached Jerusalem, at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and told them, Go into the village ahead of you. As soon as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here right away. So they went and found a colt outside in the street, tied by a door. They untied it, and some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered them, just as Jesus had said, so they let them go. They brought the donkey to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their clothes on the road, and others spread leafy branches cut from the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming king, kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. He went into Jerusalem and into the temple. After looking around at everything, since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the Twelve. Great. Uh, before we jump into this, mm -hmm. I want to talk about uh, how Hesse, Brian, and Adam were trying to decide who had the longest hair between Kate and I uh, yesterday during the Devo. And right now, it's me. Uh, Kate just got her hair cut, so mine yeah. is a little longer right now. But, but we haven't seen them since I got it cut. So. Yeah, so, but the plan is to, is to fix that, to make sure that hers is longer. Yes. Because that's Kate's rule. Her hair has to be longer than mine. <laughs> It's a preference. It's not um, cool. But yeah, and you might notice that we are not Pastor Brian. We actually swapped days. Yeah, so. sorry to take you out. So, so today is, is Thursday. Don't get confused. Yeah. It's Thursday. Um, but yeah, let's dig into what the word has to say. So Jesus, the crowd, and the disciples, they're all going from Jer Jericho and heading towards Jerusalem. And uh, when they get out uh, onto the road, they see this blind beggar on the road. And uh, he, he hears that it's Jesus because he can't see. So he hears that it's Jesus, and he decides that he is going to try to encounter Jesus. So, uh, and then later on we see why, and that's because he wants healed. And so it's a very, very quick exchange. Not a lot of text is given to it. Uh, we just see the man uh, crying out. So he's, he's yelling, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
uh, the people are saying, be quiet, be quiet. And he says, he says it again. He says, have mercy on me, son of David. So twice he calls Jesus this son of David. He gives him this title, son of David. And so uh, then Jesus stops. Uh, he says, bring, call him, bring him here. So the people tell him, you know, all right, he's, he's, he's telling you to come. And he says, what do you want from me? And uh, want me to do for you? And he says, Rabboni, which means teacher. So he then acknowledges him as teacher or, or master. So this teacher. And he says, I want to see. And Jesus says, go, your faith has saved you. And so that's it. That's the end of the exchange. And so um, I think some important notes are, uh, well, first we see this identification from this blind beggar of Jesus. He gives Jesus this title, uh, son of David. So let's, let's unpack that a little bit. Okay. It doesn't have to be super unpacked, but what, what's significant about being son of David or, or making this identification? What is this man essentially mm-hmm. saying when he is calling upon Jesus? Um, well, he's identified the, I mean, in the Old Testament, it's referenced that Jesus, um, through the line of David would come the Messiah, the one to save, um, save all people. Now, people thought that was going to be David, um, because there's the, the phrasing you may have heard of, um, out of the stump of Jesse, um, will grow a shoot. So out of Jesse was David's father. Um, and somewhere out of him that would come. And so that was through David, but through future generations of David's line, um, it was prophesied that that's where the Messiah would come from. So him, I, um, this blind man, um, Bartimaeus, um, which is interesting that I think that they actually name who he is because most times they don't name these people that Jesus is healing, but this, they even name him as Bartimaeus and give you who his father is. Um, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. So this man um, is claiming and identifying Jesus as this descendant of David, as the son of David who is going to be the Messiah. So he is clearly stating Jesus' identity, which is a theme that we've discussed um, in this book of who is Jesus. Um, So yeah, that's kind of important. And it's interesting, too, that he's asking for Jesus identified as the Messiah to come to have mercy on him Um, that uh, it seems here that while he's ultimately going to ask for his sight to be restored um, that it's not really about his his sight his physical sight but it's more about his heart and his faith um, saving him so yeah Yeah. he he asks for mercy first so Mm -hmm. mercy from who he thinks is the son of David, so acknowledging Christ as the son of David, the Messiah, asks for mercy, and then, then he asks that, mm-hmm. he says he wants to see again. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And then there are the people around him that once Jesus stops and tells people, yeah, call the man to me, call him to come to me, that the other people around him are helping him and encouraging him and saying, go, like, go to him he's calling like here's your chance like you don't need to keep crying out for mercy from the lord like he's calling to you um uh yeah yeah i wonder i wonder why they tried to uh shut the man up at first (laughs) they said they warned him to keep quiet right right Um, it's not really clear to me why they wanted him to be quiet but i would imagine him exclaiming very loudly that this is this is son of david may have upset some people <laughs> yeah. uh, because there were likely those among them that that was offensive to say that this man was the son of David. Right, because yeah. that would that would be claiming that someone is from God and that's ultimately what Jesus gets accused of at the end um, in his um, upon his arrest and his uh, sentence to death was because he was blaspheming. So that's possible that that was part of it. But, you know, I also think of it a little bit maybe like how we, the it's been described that these crowds are like sheep without a shepherd, that they're kind of just like going with the flow. So like, you know, everybody was like in awe of Jesus and was like, oh, who is this man? Like, yeah. and this man's just like in a crowd, like yelling out, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. And he's just like acting like a nutball. And people are like, dude, like calm down, calm yeah. down. And then when Jesus acknowledges it, they're like, oh, okay, go, go. Like, yeah. Just really not, like, whatever Jesus says. I mean, which is a good thing to follow. Like, a good... <laughs> yeah, it, we don't exactly know why the crowd was trying to quiet him. All we know is that they, they didn't want him to keep 
yelling for some reason. Yeah. Uh, but Jesus had different plans. He said, actually bring him to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's kind of this, this interaction. And so now as they're getting closer, getting closer to Jerusalem, he gives his uh, disciples a task. Uh, and he tells them to go into the village ahead. So go in ahead of them. Uh, find a colt tied there. So Jesus is making a prediction saying that there's going to be a colt tied there. Um, which no one has ever sat on. He wants them to take the colt and bring it to him uh, so that he can <laughs> ride it in. And so they, they went and did this. And they came, he, oh, and he said, tell the people that, uh, what was it? Uh, the Lord, the Lord, Lord needs it. The Lord, oh my gosh, I can't speak. The Lord needs this colt. That's what he says. Tell them to say the Lord needs it. So they do that. The people are fine with it. And they bring the colt back to Jesus. Uh, Jesus hops on the colt and rides it into Jerusalem. And we get this um, this shout, this chant from the people who are witnessing um, uh, Jesus coming in. And do you want to just wanna quickly reread what they were shouting? Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So, is there any similarities between what we just read and <laughs> this now? Kate pointed this out before we uh, we started this morning. Um, yeah, because we were trying to figure out well, how do these stories connect um, and why did Mark put these back to back other than where they're happening on the road, but what's significant about the similarities. And so we were just talking about how the blind Bartimaeus was calling him the son of David. And here the whole crowd is shouting and calling him, uh, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. So there's both these references to David's lineage that that they, um, they're saying that their father was David, but um, calling Jesus the son of David, um, that there's this um, real claim about uh, the Messiah who has come. Yeah, and, the, and so these, these people are chant, chanting that as Jesus is coming in, that he is he's ushering in the, the kingdom of, of their father, mm-hmm. their father David. Yeah. Um, which is, is, is true in a, in a sense, it's, it is the kingdom of David, but it's actually the kingdom of their father, God, God the Father. Mm-hmm. So they weren't completely right as they, as they were chanting this. So they did, they did make the, the, referen- uh, the realization that this is you know, like a descendant of David, and he's coming in. Um, but he's, he's ushering not only the kingdom of their father, David, but the kingdom of their father, God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think ultimately here, we're seeing a lot of, um, yeah, just really and com- like fully, completely acknowledging the the identity of Jesus and that he is this son of David, this um, this one to be worshipped and praised for coming in and bringing God's kingdom. That he, um, yeah, that he would. That's that's who he is. And this first we see just this blind man identify that and want to follow Jesus, um, and then we we see this whole crowd of people. Something else I noted, um, just as we were reading this, is that um, a similarity between the two. Um, we see that the blind man, once they're like encouraging him, like, oh, get up, call, he's calling for you. In verse 50, it says, he threw off his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. And in chapter 11, um, verse 7, um, they brought the donkey to Jesus, threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And then verse 8, many people spread out their clothes on the road. Um, and other spread leafy branches from the field. So there's, I just noticed this, like, People this are, man, like undressing. <laughs> right, to go to Jesus, he took off his coat, um, he took off an outer garment, he was, he was more, I don't know if this is right, I don't know the history of fashion and clothing um, in biblical times, but I know you had multiple layers. Um, so he threw off his coat, and these other people are also taking off these, these layers of their clothing and laying them on the, on the road, um, now, for this man, it was probably a, um, you know, like, he took off his coat so he could fully be before the Lord. He was not naked. but And then these these people are laying their clothes on the ground in a way to um, prepare a, a, I'm just saying, a, a king-like path, a, um, a triumphant, like a real grand entry that he, this his colt could walk on. Um, yeah, and his general respect. Yeah. Taking that the coat mm-hmm. off for him, their clothes. Yeah. So just seeing that, that it seems like this man, this um, Bartimaeus, is kind of a one person 
image of what is also happening here of just really proclaiming who the who Christ is and that he is worthy to be honored and praised and that he is bringing this kingdom um and that why is he like why are they praising him they just love Jesus they're seeing more and more that they're also claiming who he is but I think we see a little further with Bartimaeus that he is really seeking um he wants to see Christ. Um, he wants to know Christ. And Christ's response is, your faith has saved you. That you're not really, that ultimately Christ is speaking of, that his faith, um, seeking mercy, has saved him from his sins, um, not just from blindness. Um, and that's what we're continuing to build up to. Yeah. Yeah. Another good point that was kind of hitting at is that when Jesus says your faith has saved you he actually doesn't even address the man's blindness at all he just says your faith has saved you and then all of a sudden the man could see again so and then he follows Jesus, and then he follows Jesus. so he, he's fully talking about his his you know his sins like his faith his faith in Christ has saved him from his sins mm-hmm. and his his being able to see is just you know <laughs> just kind of a side, but like a little side thing for him. Mm-hmm. That's not even near as important as his salvation from sins, uh, but he gets that as well from Jesus. Yeah, and so we see, we, we haven't really talked a whole bunch about this first part in 11, where Jesus the com- commands the disciples to go get this donkey. That's actually a cult. Um, yeah. So, we, do we have anything to say about that? Just, um, just that I, what I was found a little striking is that Jesus anticipated all of their needs for getting this cult, that he didn't just say, go and do it. Like, he already anticipated that they, like, okay, well, what do you do if people are telling you to, like, are asking questions? And he even prepares them for how to respond to the questions they would receive. So he gives them very clear instructions. He gives them, um, which we see perfectly playing out. Um, so I think that, yeah. um, for one, what do we see, get out of that? Or, like, why is that important? Um is we see Jesus's like uh would that be omniscience all knowing yeah 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 that he knows all and he is able to say what is going to happen and um it happens as he says <clears throat> yeah, it's almost like nestled between these two claims of his davidic line um first from the man then from the crowd as he's entering he kind of exercises his 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 king authority of being all powerful of saying this this is what's going to happen for for me to get from here into the city mm-hmm. so he kind of exercises his uh the proof of, of these claims that he is you know from david's line he is he is the son of david mm-hmm. um yeah anything else to say no you have an application yeah i think i think the application is um I, for the for an audience that, that this was written to, it meant, I get, of course many many Jews would have been reading this, but also many many Gentiles as, as well. So I don't think it was written primarily to Jews. Um, it was kind of distributed all over the Mediterranean. Um, I think a reader of this would def- at that time would definitely pick out you know that that <laughs> Jesus is the Son of David. Like this this is the man that comes from David's line. Who is who is going to usher in the kingdom of God? Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of what the, the application uh, for them is, and then for us, it is to to recognize that that Jesus Jesus is this fulfillment of the prophecy mm-hmm. um, that he is um, he is the son of David. Uh, this this is his kingdom that he's ushering in the kingdom of God, and so we should call out to him and say, Lord, like son of David, Lord, have have mercy on us. Mm-hmm. Um, and and Christ says that. That this man's faith, so our faith, our faith in Christ is what's going to save us. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of the application, is the acknowledgement that, uh, for me at least, that, that Christ, you know, he is the Son of David. He is uh, the one that's ushering in this kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of what he's representing here, is this, this ushering in of this kingdom right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's that, and then also the application is just how those respond, um, how those praise and respond to um, Christ, <laughs> essentially, that, that they are praising Hosanna 
um, which I forget what that really, like a more specific definition of Hosanna, but <clears throat> maybe you know, put in the comments. Um, is there a significance of using the word Hosanna here? But um, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Just how they're praising and shouting this and honoring Christ, um, I think is is kind of the response of identifying who Christ is. And even the man, um, Bartimaeus, um, he goes, he can see, and he just immediately follows Jesus on the road. Um, that um, kind of the application here of as we um, kind of apply in the way that TJ was saying, then how are we praising and really honoring the Lord and following after him um, in response to uh, him uh, having mercy on us and dying for us and rising again for us and saving us from our sins? Like, how are we really um, not just taking that for granted, I guess, in a way, but really praising the Lord for it? So that's what I got. Um, yeah, we will see you guys again on Monday. Um, today is Thursday. Do you have yeah, not Wednesday. <laughs> um, but anyway, let me close this in prayer, and then you can head off on your day. Uh, dear Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to study your word, to read, um, and to see uh, all the intricacies of this text. It truly is living and active and has been um, di divinely designed by you. Uh, Lord, thank you for seeing, for giving us the eyes to see um, the, the emphasis about the son of David and how Christ really was, um, you used that line, that lineage to bring about your, your son who would save us all. Um, would you remind each one of us, um, of that joy and that mercy that you've had on us? Help us to all come when Christ calls to us, um, and to truly, um, rejoice over your coming, rejoice over your presence. Um, we pray all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, for those watching live, thanks for sp spending your morning with us. Uh, if you know anyone who you think would like to hear or needs to hear God's word, you know, feel free to share this video with them. And have a great day. Mm -hmm. yeah. See ya. See ya. <clears throat>